Hi, I'm Dave Caddy, the Food Dude, and it's time for the Top Chef Podcast, Season 10 in Seattle. With me today, Jennifer Monies. Hello, Jennifer. Hello. Wow, we had a lot going on. Uh, we, we, we'll pick it up. We didn't do a podcast last week because of the holiday, and as it turns out, the, two, the last two episodes kind of worked together. So going back one episode... We had this Thanksgiving, you know... Tom Colicchio versus <laughs> Emerald Spicy Cajun Thanksgiving yeah, craziness. Sounds like a Thanksgiving I'd like to be invited to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Except for the raw turkey that, uh, yeah, that, was that a problem. showed up. That was kind of embarrassing. <laughs> it so, was like burnt on the outside and raw <laughs> on the inside. Like the I, absolute worst like possible turkey ever. <laughs> well, didn't she have immunity? That was Josie yeah. who made that. And she had yeah. immunity. She was re- yeah. really lucky. You can't make the turkey, you go home. Unless... You win immunity because of the quick fire challenge. It's pretty bad when they even, like, typically if you have immunity, they don't even bring you into the right, room. They, right, like, right. felt the need to bring her yeah, into the room right. and say, you like, suck. you suck <laughs> and you're super lucky that you have immunity because we all want to send you home. How did you screw up that turkey so bad and all that? Yeah, that was that was intense. But, but the big thing that was going on there was towards the end, we had uh, uh, the young Japanese girl... Was, Kristen. Yeah, she was she was eliminated, and oh, she no, no, no. Not, not Kristen. Um, um, oh, I, I can't remember her I, name. I would say it wrong. If yes, I, I, I know, I know exactly. <laughs> what you, we're, we're trying to be you have some Culturally decorum sensitive. here. Yes, but but yeah, but she and John Tizar had obviously had had apparently hit it off pretty good early on, and Tizar seemed to be sort of going through. Oh, you know, she could didn't cook her potatoes. You, you just you got to have your eye on the prize. And at that point, CJ and our man Josh took offense to his sort of waxing poetic about her downfall. Yes. And, you know, you get the impression, especially from CJ's reaction, you know, the way they jumped on him so quickly, it's, it, it, you know, Tizar is an older chef for the competition. You get the impression that he sort of tries to let everybody know what he's done. Yeah, because they seem to have a really short fuse with well, him. Well, and in this episode, an yes, example of that, as we in, kind of segue yeah. in, is Josh was like, "We know that you've opened forty-eight restaurants <laughs> right. or whatever," like all sarcastically. So obviously, right. there's some things yeah. going on off camera that he yeah. keeps rubbing in people's yeah, face that sort he's of, the most experienced yes, guy yes. out there. Well, yeah, and even in his introduction, when he says, "Well, the first thing that comes out of his mouth is." Tony Bourdain says I'm the greatest cook alive. <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and and as I and I've mentioned this before, if you if you go on to the internet and find the Dallas uh, the D magazine article that you know is sort of the backdrop of Tzar about the most hated chef in Dallas, you kind of get you kind of can see what's going on with his personality. He obviously has, you know, he he's constantly struggling to 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 prove himself. Yeah. You know, he has a real strong need to do that. Well, and, and I think I think it's interesting that he and Stefan haven't gotten into it because, yeah. like, Stefan was that guy his season totally, where he was totally. like, I'm the best chef that God ever created, <laughs> right. and, like, nobody can even touch me. And now they're both together. I mean, that uh, yeah. that's brewing. Well, and Stefan seems to, to like it. Yeah. He's, he's pushing their buttons so hard, and I love it. You know, because, <laughs> see, and, and Stefan, see, whereas I think Tizar may be a little bit crazy. Stefan is is crazy like a fox. Yeah. And he sees this as an opportunity for somebody to take somebody out of their game. Well, and he's been through it before, and he's been that guy before, and it didn't work for him. So I think he's at least smart enough to know. Like, uh, There's a couple of guys, and I can't think. The guy with the Mm -hmm. earrings, too. I can't think of his name. But the guys that are like, I know I'm good, and I'm just going to lay low and kind of like – and then probably be – yeah. The guy at the yeah. end, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's a pretty good strategy. It is. It's a really good strategy because sometimes if you cook too good early, it, it just creates that, you know, the, the, this anticipation that you're at the top. And so if you do have a downfall in the middle, you get punished more. Yeah. Or, or they, 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 they look at you a little harder, I, I yeah. feel like, you know? And so... And we started this week's episode with this bleep fest, and which you know, with the Josh uh, Valentine drinking game, it was it was on. Yeah. So thank you, Josh, for that. Uh, bars all over the city are appreciating uh, your your uh, tirade yes. very much. So we go from Thanksgiving into this interesting episode where lots happened. You know, uh, in, well, in the, in this quick fire. You know, we had oh, what's her name? Uh, the, the the guest chef who brought in the primal cuts, who oh, brought in the yeah, big sides of beef. Annette uh, Pomeroy uh, yeah. is her name. And uh, 
Naomi, I think it's Naomi Pomeroy, and uh, and this is right, right up Josh's alley. I just from my personal knowledge of him, this I mean, I, he literally had to be licking his chops, and he did well. Yeah, uh, it worked out. It was it was kind of interesting, but. It was interesting too because it was CJ and Tzar and Josh that were all that. This was some good uh, editing and production. Yeah, on I feel Bravo's like they were part. setting it up as <laughs> right. like these are the guys and these. They are, hate I mean, each other. they all hate each other and they're all really good and they're all going to come to blows at some point in the very near future. And so here they are, top three, and Tzar wins yes. and he gets the immunity. To, to everyone's consternation <laughs> uh, with some oxtail, which he uh, braised, I guess, in in very in a very short amount of time, which is sort of amazing. So yeah. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how that works. But uh, anyways, uh, oh, oh, very nice. Uh, and then uh, so we go on from there. And this I loved this elimination challenge. The 1950 challenge was so yeah. cool. I mean, it's. This incredible restaurant that's been around forever, and they had to create stuff from the 1950s. I wish it had been more like, I wish they had had to pair a drink with it, or like <laughs> Mad Men set, right. or something. You like just John wish Don Hamm, Draper was perhaps there. <laughs> being on Top Chef, you know, could, he is affiliated couldn't hurt. With NBC. Yeah, I see what's going on here. And <laughs> just I don't saying. like it. I just am saying. not so sure this is okay. <laughs> this, this is going in the wrong direction really quickly. But no, it, it, it's so. Here we go, and Tzar has the uh, he has the the uh, immunity. Uh, Josh gets uh, French onion soup, and which he massacred. Which he massacred Josh. Josh. Depressing. It was a little depressing. Though I saw he said on Twitter that he does not serve cold food. So. <laughs> well done, Josh. You know, defending his honor. <laughs> and, and, and hey, let's be honest. How do you serve cold soup? Yeah. How do you do it? Okay, there's a couple of ways. Obviously, you turn off the burner which clearly didn't happen the other thing that can happen is if you have cold bowls yeah that can have an effect the third way is if your expediter <laughs> sits and looks at your soup <laughs> until he sees the mist or the uh the, the steam stop coming i still off think it's it. hilarious that everybody was just okay with the guy that they all hate being the expediter i, I mean this is the guy that's in charge of your food and, and who can ended control. up on bottom josh and cj i mean i mean this is not rocket science <laughs> at all like the guy has an agenda that's right and you know exactly I mean, and it so uh you know this round goes to chef tzar uh, for his gamesmanship, yeah. and uh, Josh uh, and CJ both survived the the double elimination. That's the other yeah. part we had is we had a double elimination. I still think it was interesting though, as far as this challenge, that the winner and lo- uh, one of the losers was like this very like Kristen won with oh. un- with fried onions yeah. and mushrooms. And I did mean, they not like, look delicious? They did look delicious, yeah. but it's like very. It goes to show that it's like mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's all about. Something Mm -hmm. tasting good because if you can just win with mushrooms, like that's that's pretty impressive. And then Joe's, I guess, who was it? Chrissy. Chrissy Mm -hmm. went home for the salad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which and there now there's where Josh actually had the most sound advice of the of the of the series, which is stay away from familiar foods, familiar recipes. A restaurant known for their Caesar salad. And you know how Caesar salad is. Yeah. You know, you there are places you go just for the Caesar. You yeah. know, like here in the city, we've got Michaels and Juniors that do the tableside Caesars, and people go there just for that, and they expect a certain thing when they get it. So, if you've never tasted it, yeah, you're you're in, you're really putting yourself behind the eight and ball. And Josh, right, happen. right from the get go, was like, yeah. "That's the hardest dish of the day. Don't do it because it's the Don't only it. one that anybody knows anything about." That's right, and and she. You know, I guess maybe somebody had to. I don't know if she had to do it or anyway, it, it turned out to be a fatal mistake because she got sent home for it. Yeah. Uh, and I thought CJ was going to get sent home. Well, I thought it was really interesting because the judges are so fickle. You know, they <laughs> they gave him, you know, they gave him a hard time for sous vide the mm-hmm. lamb. Right. Which, because that's not a 50s yeah. style, you know, technique of mm-hmm. cooking. But typically they're like. I think that they typically like something like that, where right. it's like they take a new technique and use it on an old to create, recipe yeah, and, yeah. you know, kind of meld those two together. Yeah. I mean, it must have just tasted bad it because been, otherwise yeah. I don't think they would have made that big of a deal right. out of the fact that he right. sous vide it. You right. Know? Yeah. I guess that's the thing is if you're going to sous vide it, it had better be perfect yeah. and beyond perfect. And so because when you don't, then you've really created like a it's a, it's again, it's, it comes down to making good decisions in the in the show. And 
And if you don't execute it, you're just going to get killed for it. And and apparently, you know, that's what happened. And with Josh, his was oversalted. And, you know, he is Chef Pork Belly. Yeah. So there was probably a little too much pork belly in there or something like that. I don't know. But, but and then it was cold. That, the, the cold seemed to be, yeah. like, a, a big deal. But Well, and lack of cheese. Someone was talking. Yeah, so well, I'm for that, too. Yeah. Like. And it, it looked – the bowl looked large. Yeah. It looked like a larger bowl than you would normally get. Yeah. So to spread that cheese all the way across, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it was that was, I don't yeah. know. I'm not really sure, but he survived it. Um, I was happy to see Carla go home. Yes, I, I'm actually surprised oh. though that they didn't keep her around longer just yeah, for the good TV. craziness effect <laughs> of it. She's but, kind of a Real Housewife. God, that may be her next show. She just <laughs> couldn't. I just could not take it. Oh well, a you can't understand anything she's saying. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's late at night. I don't want to have to read subtitles the whole time. <laughs> Come on. There's only yeah. so much of that I can do. But, uh, yeah, so she gets sent home. and uh, But not so much. Not so fast. Yes. Back comes Last Chance Kitchen. And here yes. we go. So, yeah, so Last Chance Kitchen is the Eliminated Chefs, which it was interesting. It was sort of like uh, – the Big Brother house or something, yeah. you know, they're sequestered in this little <laughs> this little cottage somewhere in the rolling in the woods, hills. Yeah. <laughs> Who and knows? yeah, I know. It seems like kind of a good deal, but but anyway, so the four eliminated chefs competed for one spot. And uh oh yes, yes, now we can we can find her name here. Uh so we we find that and we we go through it and they had a chance, what was it? they had a chance to uh to remake a dish that they screwed up or do something completely different. And it's Kuniko Yagi is uh, was the winner. She was the young lady who was eliminated for the uh, Thanksgiving challenge. And and so, yeah, she came through. And she won the previous challenge yes. to that. So yes. I think that that's probably a good you know, bring back. It is. It's a little bit like Texas where you had Beverly who got eliminated pretty early on or – not super early, but sort of in the middle. But she had done very good, even yeah. though she irritated everybody. She was obviously very talented, and she ended up going all the way. And uh, Kuniko, I, she seems to be one too who could who could well, actually. She seems hold on. like the very quiet, silent type mm-hmm. that everyone's going to underestimate. Yeah, absolutely. And she, I think she probably, hopefully, learned her lesson of. I mean, I think the only reason she got kicked off before was because she was helping everybody else yes. so much that she yes. didn't cook her potatoes right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. When it's which is. It seems like a stupid mistake to undercook potatoes, but any of us who've ever cooked potatoes, it's not that easy hard to, to do. do. <laughs> yeah, it's very easy to undercook potatoes. They are very, very. They're. they're it's just. It, it happens all the time. So anyway, Kuniko goes through on Last Chance Kitchen. Sorry if we ruined that for anybody, by the way, because that's an internet only thing. But too bad you should have looked by now. <laughs> so she goes through. Josh survives. And, uh, and then we move on to next week, and it's looking like it's going to get even more intense. I'm just, you know, more Stefan. Yes, you know, Stefan. Look, St- looking forward to the craziness yes. that will continue to ensue. Now, one thing off Top Chef's uh, subject that I wanted to mention real quick, I don't know if you were able to watch this or not. Uh, on Tuesday night on uh, Food Network's Chopped, we had an Oklahoma chef on there. Hmm. Very cool. And Chopped is one, if, if you guys haven't seen it, it's, a, it's just a – Hour long show, uh, I think it's four chefs, and there's there's a winner every episode. So anyway, um, and they replay it a ton on Food Network. So so this is one to look out for. Chef name is uh, Tab Singleton. He's from Ida Bell, Oklahoma, and he's currently the executive sous chef for Nola in Emerald's restaurant down in New Orleans. And he was in uh, Abendigos down in Ida Bell for many years, and at the Polo Grill for about a year in Tulsa. Mm-hmm. And he went on Chopped, and he won. So he won ten grand. Congratulations on that, Tab. Talked to him yesterday, and Tab is actually looking at opening a restaurant in Oklahoma City sometime next year. Awesome. So very cool. His uh, You will be looking forward to contemporary redneck cuisine, which sounds nice. just perfect. Sounds so, right up. So, around. yeah, we're having, a, we're having a good time here in Oklahoma with, our, with uh, some – burgeoning celebrity chefs perhaps so and it seems like i mean i think with more and more restaurants opening i think that we'll see more of them absolutely yeah hey with josh on on getting this exposure and with tab and his success and and hopefully coming back here and being a part of our market 
you know, that they will simply, they'll follow the success. And yeah. so hopefully we'll have some more of our chefs. That Top Chef stuff. Oklahoma? Yes, Top Chef Oklahoma. <laughs> let's let's start the petition now. Anyway, uh, we, we have a lot of season left, a lot of good times to come. So stick with us. And as for right now, I think it's about time to pack up those knives. What do you think? Sounds good. All right. Done. Done.